Hi everyone, it's Mari. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I will be flipping through my pocket Moterm planner to show you all how I have set it up. So if you're interested in that, then please keep watching and let's get right into it. So starting off with my keychains, first we have Zenitsu from Kimetsu no Yaiba. He has captured my heart and so that's why he is right here. And this is a polar bear keychain that I picked up a couple years ago from Japan because it was a perfect representation of me when I'm hangry. So these two things make me feel happy when I see them. So that is why they are attached to this planner. Moving into the planner. So I actually find the introduction of the covers in these types of videos to be extremely boring. So I'm gonna run through this very quickly so that you're not subjected to that. First, we have Mikasa Ackerman, a card that I got from a konbini. Right here we have some sticky notes from Midori that I like to keep right here. Inside of this zipper pouch I like to keep a couple index stickers and inside the secretarial flap I have a couple little stickers that I think I might want to use inside of the planner but have yet to use them so far. And then in the back pocket, I have the passport size traveler's notebook pencil board. Okay, so moving right into it, we have first this postcard that I cut down to size and added some holes in of fruit sandwich because I really love fruit sandwiches and I bought this postcard in Japan and I thought it was adorable so I laminated the front and then stuck it right here to also kind of stabilize any writing. Next, uh, we have a to-do list that I created on Canva. It's just a place where if this is what I have on hand, then I'm gonna jot down any of my tasks right here. And then we have a couple pieces of paper. These are grid, grid pieces of paper that actually I ripped out from this Zequins notebook. Um, I've had it for years and I just haven't gotten around to using it and so I ripped a couple pages from the back and then cut it down to size and put in some holes and it's working perfectly as some scrap pieces of paper that I can jot down random notes on. And I also have these kind of post-it looking but they're not they're just little pieces of origami paper that i've added some holes in and stuck them right in here so we're moving into the first section and this is where i have called it my study planner these black dividers i made myself from some cardboard pieces of paper that i bought from the dollar store and then i just did a little collage here to signify what this section is all about so first we have this ashford clear pocket that you can actually open up like this because it has slits in the side and inside of it i have these plotter to-do list pages where I have written down all of the tasks that I need to complete for my courses and this is actually meant as you can see clearly for the mini 5 planner but I decided to move it into here because I decided that this would be my study planner so we've got that and then a random date picture right here <laughs> And then on this paper, which is also from Ashford, I got it from these. These are just regular lined paper from Ashford. I've added them into here, and this is my plan for getting into my master's. And then I have a couple more to-do list pages that I have dedicated specifically for my studies. So anything related to my studies will go onto this task list.
And this is also a divider that I created myself that I laminated the front of. So it's essentially just origami paper that I cut to size and then added some holes in and laminated. So this, I believe, is from Puffin Pages Co. This is their 2022 overview that I have used as a guideline for all of the tasks I need to complete per month in order to be on schedule. That's working out pretty well so far. And then we have another divider that I created that I've decided to use as my post-it holder. And this is another thing that I created on Canva and it's just a rolling roll out yearly calendar that I have decided to use as a yearly overview for my studies. So any deadlines, assignments, submissions, or quizzes or finals that I need to take, that goes into here. Another divider with some sticky notes. And this is a 2022 calendar as well as a 2023 calendar that came in a pack so it came in this pack which is a monthly and weekly overview of 2022 and then that is it for my study section now we are moving into my youtube related section so once again we have a to-do list that i created again on canva that is specifically dedicated for youtube Another divider. And this is another template that I created on Canva, but this is dedicated to any ideas I have for my channel. So all of that comes in here and it's been working very well so far. So I'm gonna skip over the actual pages I've used cause I wanna keep those a secret for now. And then we've got another divider. And this is another template that I created, which is specifically for brainstorming my content ideas. So before I get into a video, then this is where I would go to, you know, write down the title, the date, and what journals I'm specifically going to talk about, any notes that I want to list down in here, and then tasks that I need to complete for that specific video. I haven't really been using this and I'm not sure it works very well for me. I tend to use a massive scrapbook for my YouTube brainstorming as well as Notion. So probably gonna do a mix of both. Got another divider here. And then once again, we have some more grid pages where I will just write down any notes that I want to have on hand. You know, this is just scrap pieces of paper. So I'm going to write in here, but then I'm going to rip them out and throw them away because they're not too important and not very pretty either. And this is the monthly and weekly overview that is created by Midori. It's carnival themed, so it's super cute. And this I'm using, this is a random sticker that I just punched holes in because I thought it was cute. Um, but this is basically my YouTube content calendar. So I write down what I know has already gone up in pen on the actual page and the things that are undecided I will put on a sticky note because my plans tend to change and <laughs> I don't want to be using whiteout and then rewriting it because my plans change so I've just put them on sticky paper also I have a key here to note what type of journal it was about so that I'm not overly focusing on one specific planner and then neglecting the others on my channel and this is some Midori index clips. Okay, so 
I initially really struggled to figure out what to use this planner for. Yes, I bought it um, impulsively and then I didn't even have a purpose for it. So while I was struggling, I had no idea how to use these weekly pages. All I knew was that I could, I knew how to use the monthlies, but when it came to the weeklies, I was like, what the fuck do I use it for? So in the end, I decided to make it as um, kind of a journaling place as well as a collaging place there are a lot of st i have a lot of stickers you guys and i want to use them more and i just haven't found a place to use them in and i figured why not do it in here even if it bulks up the planner i can just you know archive them so it does it's not a big deal and honestly it just makes me really happy to look back on these pages Sometimes I just open up this planner to just look at these pages because they make me so happy and it's so nice to look at them and touch them and yeah. I don't know if you guys do that as well, but I definitely do. <laughs> so basically this is just, I put a little prompt here if I have nothing specific to journal about and then I just answer that specific prompt and then I'll do the collaging ahead of time so that I can work around the the stickers and stuff and then it turns out like this and I'm really loving it so far. I really love this spread. I don't know why, not really this side, but I love this side. I've been obsessed with Encanto ever since I watched it and um, I really love the song Surface Pressure so that's why I've did a little collage of that over here. And also I have never done like this type of washi tape use in my journals before. It's just not something that I used to do, but I saw it on an Instagram post and I was like, wow, that is so out of the box. And I decided to try it on this spread and I really like it. Ah yes, and this is my to spread. So I finished watching Kimetsu no Yaiba on February 16th and I decided to journal about specifically Zenitsu because I thought he was so cool in the Yukaku arc. It's just so fun. These collages, you know, they're not as aesthetic as the ones I like to do in my Hobonichi or the ones that I used to do in my Traveler's Notebook. It's really just to have fun, to lay down stickers without thinking about it and it's a way for me to relax. I mean, I would never do this probably like in my Hobonichi, I wouldn't use these kind of stickers. I wouldn't use, you know, these little squiggly lines. Probably not, because it's just, it's not aesthetic, but it makes me happy and I don't think about it. I don't need to use my brain. And then it all comes together in the end, you know? So I love it. And the goal with these spreads is to do one collage per week, which is definitely doable. So, I still need to do this one, but I am very much enjoying it so far. This is inside the YouTube section. I just didn't want to separate the monthlies and the weeklies, so I've just decided to keep it all together. Who cares? You know, it makes sense to me. <laughs> and then I've also put the monthly calendar for March and added all of my content ideas for each week so i'm not, I'm not gonna go over that because it's a secret and then i have another divider and this is the same printable that i'm just using for my youtube so this is my key and it has a list of all of the journals that i have and i basically mark each video to show myself which journal I talked about in that video. So it looks exactly the same and it has all of the videos that I have produced so far. And next we have a very random section. I don't have a title for it and <laughs> that's also why this collage doesn't make any sense. It has absolutely no bearing on the rest of this section. So first we have this printable that I created on Canva as well, and it is a weekly review. This is a recent addition to my planner. I didn't have it before, 
but I really wanted to do some sort of weekly review so that I could, you know, go over what happened that week, reflect, and then do better next week or, you know, figure out how I can improve for next week. So on this first page, I have written down questions that are specifically to do with my goals. And then on the second page, I have more health focused questions. I haven't used these yet, so we'll see if I change anything later. Have a little divider here. And then I created this um, monthly review thing and I had nothing to put on the front. So I decided to put some Howl, <laughs> Howl's Moving Castle art here. And yeah, it looks like this, but basically the idea is I'll write down a review for each month. And then at the end of the year, I can look over how well I did every single month. If I'm being honest, these squares are pretty tiny and I don't know how functional this is gonna be. And then we have Chihiro. <laughs> then another divider. And this is where I'm keeping my January monthly and weekly spreads. So again, on the monthly calendar, I'm doing a content calendar. And then we go into the weekly spreads. There was one week in February where I really just wanted to collage and I did most of these spreads in that one week <laughs> which was really fun but it's kind of tapered off so yeah i really like this spread i was feeling kind of down for this spread and that's why there are a lot of affirmations all over the page and it's just a very uplifting spread in my opinion Yes, and then we have a Levi spread because I love Levi. Him and Zaytze are, at the moment, my crushes. <laughs> so I created a spread for Levi, but I'm waiting to fill it out because I'm waiting to finish the final season of Attack on Titan, and then I want to write down a review and write down how I felt. So I'm waiting on that. Then this is another spread that I haven't filled out yet. And then this is very random, but I thought I might want to do a finance section. So here I want to write down all of my fixed expenses for the month. This is just some paper that I ripped out of a notepad and then I cut it down to size and punched some holes in. And this is from Peanuts Planner Co. It's a freebie and I just got it off the website and printed it out. And I'm thinking of using this as a budget tracker. So I have yet to try that. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And then on this random piece of paper here, I'm actually gonna keep track of my spendings. And this is another postcard that I cut down to size. And in here we have some color swatches. There was no purpose for this. I just really wanted to do one. <laughs> and this is a little mini five insert that I did a brainstorm in of what I wanted to include in this planner. Oh, so while I'm talking about that, I'll just go on a little tangent, but I have seen and watched a lot of planner videos because I'm new to this whole ring planner thing and I really wanted to know what I could include. So I watched a lot of Japanese YouTubers setting up their, you know, ring planners. And I've also watched a lot of North American YouTubers and there is a very clear difference. I've noticed that with the Japanese YouTubers, there's a lot of DIYing and they tend to create a lot of their spreads themselves. And there's just a lot of random stuff. There's a lot of also like anime, manga influenced, um, inserts and stuff 
and random bits of paper. On the other hand, when I watched North American YouTubers, I noticed that they're very polished, super clean, super minimal, super gorgeous. I guess for this setup, I definitely went more with the Japanese influence because, you know, there's a lot of random sizes in this planner. There's a lot of weird random pieces of paper that don't really match the the vibes. It's kind of all over the place, which is what I wanted for this planner, but I'm also very open and also very interested in making my planner look as aesthetically pleasing as the North American YouTubers. Yeah, we'll see. Um, It's just that for this one setup, I kind of wanted to do everything by myself and keep the cost as low as possible. So that's why I DIY'd most of my spreads and also, you know, make, made do with what I had. I think I really wanted a planner that makes me happy and that includes, you know, kind of geeky stuff, kind of nerdy <laughs> stuff like anime, like manga, you know, like Zaytsu, like Levi. It's just not something that I've ever played around with, I guess, in my own planners. I've more kept it on the aesthetic, you know, minimal side, and I just wanted somewhere where I could let go. So that's basically what this planner is. Okay, so now I'm done with my tangent. Let's get back into it. And in here, I have created a little table, which is inspired by Lindsay Scribbles. Uh, she has this in and out wish list type of thing where you write down stuff you wanna give away or donate or sell, and then things that you want. And I have a couple more pieces of scrap paper here. And then I have some more lined paper from Ashford, as well as some craft paper from this brand. And I have some grid paper from Petit Page M. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go on another tangent. The first thing I noticed, because I bought these pages, these kinds of um, pages from Japan, right? And they also have their ring planners, their own ring planners in Japan. But when I got the Moterm, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a huge difference here. First of all, the, the size of the holes is very different. This is the Japanese paper, and this is the paper that came with this Moterm planner. First of all, the Japanese paper is a lot taller, and it's also thinner in width. And the ring, the holes, are a lot closer to the edge than this um, pocket insert that came with the Moterm. That was a struggle to, <laughs> to uh, figure out here because it, it makes a pretty big difference because it kind of sticks out more if the ring, if the holes are this close to the edge. And also it kind of makes it hard to flip the pages when the holes are this tiny. So that's just something to note. Okay, moving on. I got a couple more pieces of paper that I ripped out of some random notepads and punched holes in. I really like these Shiba Inu uh, little post-its. And then we have this sticker kind of paper that I bought from Daiso and then I cut it down to size. And then it's a place where you can stick any of your stickers, which I haven't done. <laughs> it also makes a very good pencil board because it's much thicker. Okay, in here I have some prompts. So these are 100 questions. Uh, I have two of these, so 50 questions per page. And this is where I go to get my prompts from that I like to answer in my weekly spreads. And this is a download from Hobonichi, I think, where it goes over how you can make your titles look cuter. And this is a printout that I got from the internet of the Japanese calendar. There was a moment, I think a couple weeks ago, where I had no idea what year it was in the Japanese calendar. And so I needed this conversion table and I figured, you know what? It might as well be a good idea to have it on hand. And now we are moving into this section. This is a very fun section in my opinion. So. It's essentially a media journal. 
So I created this template on Canva and it is a movie review spread. So I print these out and then I print these uh, movie posters separately. I have space for the title, the date, the rating that I give it and my review. I just love looking back on these spreads. It's so much fun. So I have a couple more empty of those. And then this is a dashboard that I created myself. So <laughs> it's something that I saw in a lot of Japanese YouTuber videos where they would make their own dashboards full of the characters, anime characters, manga characters, movie people, singers, actors, actresses that they loved and that made them really happy. And I decided to do that for myself. So we have Zendaya. We have Timothy Chalamet, we have Violet Evergarden, and obviously we have Levi. And uh, these I also laminated the front of. The reason that I only laminated the front is because I used those self-laminating inserts and I could not for the life of me figure out how to do the back. So <laughs> I just ripped it off and then just kept the front. And then this is where I do my reviews of any shows and anime. Also, I am very sorry about the very loud highway noise that I'm sure is going to be in the background of this video. The things that I haven't uh, completed are because obviously I haven't finished watching the whole thing and so I haven't, I don't feel that I can give a full review of it just yet. And we have another dashboard. And then I have this little book review section. This was a much later edition. I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to do it because I do have a dedicated reading journal. Um, but you know, I was like, why not? It's cute, it's fun. And I made two versions of these. So one has the book uh, review section on both sides, but there's another template that I created where it has this really long lined page. <laughs> if I wanna do a longer review, then I can do that here. And then finally, we move into this food recipe meal planning section. So I also created these on Canva and I was thinking I could do a sort of meal tracker in here. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack I could do in here a random piece of origami paper that I laminated that was originally meant for my mini five planner but I decided to put it in here and then on this craft paper I decided to create a little list of all of the restaurants that I want to visit in Vancouver and check out this is another postcard that I cut down to size. And these are some templates that I created off of Canva once again. And this is for my recipes. So the, the plan was I was going to take a photo of when I would make these things and then stick it in here. And then I would give it a rating at any notes that I should keep in mind. And then on the back, we have a list of ingredients as well as the directions for cooking it. So far, I've only used two of these. The only thing is I don't really want to bring my planner into my kitchen because I don't want it to get ruined by oil or something. So that's why yeah, this I'm not too sure of, although it's a very cute idea. And that is it for the inside of my planner. And uh, this is the flyleaf that came with the Moturn planner. And in here, I'm using the Uniball Signo RT1 pen in 0.28. I had no idea I would like such a thin pen, but it really works well for this pocket planner. And then I have a couple of oh, brain fart stickers. Yep of lemons that I got from Daiso. And then I have this um, 
password little booklet that I got in Japan as well. Basically, you write down the website name here, your username, password, and any notes that you want to note down. And I've started filling it out from the back for some reason, uh, and it's working really well. So, you know, those times when I don't want to go to my phone to check what the password is, I can just use this. In this little flap here, I have a couple more stickers, rainbow colored from Daiso. And then I have this where I keep all of my printouts of books, TV shows, movies, as well as other collaging material that I might want to use in the future. I have a lot of um, Encanto printouts at the moment, as well as more Timothy Chalamet, <laughs> uh, Levi, um, and then, as I said, some books in here. And then this pen is the Pilot OPT. I don't know what size it is, but it's quite thin as well. And then finally, I have put in this passport size notebook that I bought from Muji. I put any random notes that I do not want to look pretty or anything special, everything goes in here. So this was a little brainstorm that I did for one of my videos. And then we've also got some like budget tracking in here as well as uh, study planning. And that is it for this flip through. I hope that it was interesting. Uh, I pretty much focused only on a DIY and freebie type of setup for this time around and I had a lot of fun doing that. So I hope it was interesting watching me flip through this pocket Moterm and if you enjoyed this video then i hope you will consider liking and subscribing and i will see you in the next one bye